Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, How to Make the Most Out of High Tech 2018, presented by Stay in Touch, Trust You, and Rainmaker. I'm your host, Free Gola, and I'm joined by my panel today, and I'll let them go ahead and introduce themselves. First up is you, Yas. Hi, my name is Jos. I'm the CEO and founder of Stay in Touch. I uh, started the company five years ago when we are focusing on uh, creating a beautiful mobile PMS that has guest engagement entirely built in from both the mobile point of view as well as the cell service point of view in the lobby of your hotel. Hi, right, Sally. Hi, everyone. This is Valerie Castillo. I'm currently the VP of Marketing at Trust You. Um, we are the world's largest guest feedback platform. We provide solutions to collect feedback, um, showcase feedback to future travelers, um, and also to communicate um, with your guests on site um, via guest messaging. So I'm very excited to talk with you all today about how to make the most out of high tech. We've been um, attending high tech for several years now. It's been a great show for us. So um, thank you so much for having us. Awesome. Ellis? Hey guys, Ellis Connolly here, uh, Senior Vice President over at Rainmaker. Uh, interesting fact is Rainmaker is actually celebrating our 20th year in business. Uh, so big, uh, big feat for us. We do revenue management and profit optimization in the hotel, resort and casino space. And uh, most simply put is we help hotels make money. Awesome, and with that said, I'm going to run through the agenda for today's webinar, and then we'll get started. We'll be discussing examples of different types of relationships that you can foster at high tech, um, how to absorb all of that information, the information overload that you're bound to, to run into, um, and the advantages of a full circle networking uh, with your current and future vendors, peers, and partners. And also, we'll, we'll top off by giving you guys a look into some of the can't-miss experiences at this year's high-tech show and around Houston. With that said, Valerie, I'm going to pass things over to you to discuss the advantages of a full-circle networking with your current and future vendors, peers, partners, and customers. Perfect. Thank you so much. So um, without any further ado, we'll get straight into the content. So. The first slide that I put together, I, I wanted to showcase to you all, you know, you can find this information on the high tech website, but hopefully that's why you joined us today because it's nice to hear about this information instead of having to read all of it. So I'll take you through some of the information that I found today for you all that might be helpful. So first starting with who will be at the show. So typical attendees at high tech, um, hotels and resorts make up about 70% of the attendees. So you're definitely going to be um, with a lot of your peers. Um, there are different types of accommodation providers there as well. Um, cruise ships, courses, casinos, all of that. Um, but for the most part, hotels and resorts um, that are using technology. I think a lot of people think of this show um, in the past as being all technology focused. So everyone that attends, um, you know, is from the IT realm. Um, but actually as of lately in the past few years, and this is based on the 2017 data, only about 27% of the attendees are actually in IT. Um, and we have almost the same amount, about 15 to 20% at a corporate level, C-level, um, within sales and marketing, and also owner operations. So really, no matter what your role is um, within a hotel or hotel company, there's definitely going to be peers within your industry that you're going to be able to bounce ideas off of, um, speak to, and network with throughout the conference. Um, I also want to talk about some of the vendor exhibitors. There's over 350 at High Tech this year. Um, you're able to find all of those names on the High Tech website. They range across a, multi a multitude of industries, um, revenue management, property management systems, CRM, your internet booking engines, um, reputation management, guest experience, and more. Um, so there's tons of people that, that you would be able to meet with. Um, so I think Yas will definitely take us through some tips about how to prepare for that. Um, but you can definitely see all of the different types of exhibitors before you reach the conference so that you can be better prepared. And then the speakers at the conference are also a, another important group that I wanna touch, touch on. Um, there's over 60 speakers um, right now on the high tech website that are listed. Most of them will also, again, be your peers. 
um, within product design, technology, business, and operations. So really, no matter what field that you have. So I definitely always encourage attendees of high tech um, to speak um, uh, more diligently with the speakers before or after their sessions. I'll get into that a little bit more um, uh, further in the presentation, but you know, these really are the thought leaders, the knowledge experts within the industry right now that are being showcased in these sessions at High Tech. So it's a great group to be taking advantage of and getting to know while you're at the show. So on the next slide, I'll take you through when is the best time to network? So this is the topic at hand. You know, you, you know that you're going to a show with tons of attendees, thousands of attendees. Um, you know, how, to, how can you make the most of it? That's what we're here to discuss today. So first of all, it's definitely knowing um, what the highlights of the event are. Um, so <clears throat> networking with your peers um, starts early on, um, that they have an opening party on Monday at 6.30 p.m., so the first day of the show, um, which is you know great. You can get food and drink and just really get to know all of the other attendees that are there. Um, then following that day, um, is meeting with vendors. So finding the solutions, meeting with vendors that are applicable to your business um, during the exhibition hours. Um, the exhibition will be open nearly the entire time, but it begins Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, and then like I said, um, networking with the speakers. Introduce yourself to the speakers before or after the educational sessions. That's why they're doing these sessions. That's why they signed up to attend because they wanna help um, and they wanna share their knowledge. So make sure that if you have any questions that you're either asking that within the session or if it's, um, you know, if it, there's a time constraint or you don't wanna ask the question in front of everyone, it's definitely a good chance for you to do that. So the sessions happen all day, Tuesday through Thursday. So lots of chances. Um, to get to know the speakers while you're there. And then I'm sure we'll be talking about this a lot during the presentation, but one of the biggest um, advantages of high tech is all of the after parties that, as well for truly full circle networking. Um, you'll meet with vendors, attendees, sponsors, speakers, organizers of the event. They're all attending these um, these after parties on each of the evenings that were that were there in Houston. So definitely something to look into. If you're not already getting emails about it now, I'm sure you will soon. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about um, what Stay in Touch, Trust You, and Rainmaker have to offer a little bit later in the presentation. Awesome, thank you for that great presentation, uh, Valerie. I do want to follow up. So how many vendors do you think uh, hoteliers should, should aim to meet with uh, during the show? You know, I think it should be based on priority. I mean, you know, you don't, you definitely can't meet with all 350, that's for sure. Um, so typically as an attendee of, of shows similar to this, I go to a lot of marketing technology shows and I like to do my research beforehand of what are the products that I actually need? What am I researching the most? Um, making sure that I know those products, kind of where their booths are and kind of set out a map for myself. So I don't think there's a particular number, um, but you know, do take advantage of the fact that all of them are in one place over these, over these several days and it doesn't all have to happen as, at once, as I said, the exhibition opens on Tuesday, but um, you know, goes all the way until Thursday. So lots of time to take advantage. Awesome. All right, we're moving on to the next uh, point here. Examples of different types of relationships that can be forged while at the show of this magnitude. Alice? Yeah, great. Thank you, Free. Appreciate that. And Valerie, uh, thanks again for setting the stage. You know, I, I think one of the one of the misconceptions about high tech and and is which of one you just kind of outlined there on the first screen is that you know everybody that goes to high tech is in IT um, or is you know in some some type of financial or accounting capacity um, and and having been to high tech myself for the last uh, I think it's I don't want to date myself it's been many years um, you know there, there's there's definitely been an influx of you know multiple types of of attendees as well as uh technology vendors that are that are coming into the space so i i, I think it's a, a a not to be missed show that happens here stateside um you know i think we get a, a good amount of folks that uh that are attending that, that come from outside of the us as well so it's uh it, it's definitely a great show to be so the things that i'm going to talk about here is you know the the types of relationships that you can forge you know uh, at a show of this magnitude um, you know I, I I think when 
you know, if you're a hotelier or if you're a vendor like like myself or you know Yoss and, and Valerie coming from the from the vendor technology side, you know, you do have to look at your priorities and you do have to focus on where, how, and how much time you want to spend in order to get the most out of the show. Um, you know, I, I, I from from the vendor side, we look to uh, you know, forge partnerships with folks that will help us gain exposure of our products as broadly as possible. Um, so for the vendor side, whether that be referral agreements, reseller, content partnerships, interface or integration partnerships as we have with Stay in Touch and, and some of the other players in the PMS space, um, you know, we look to see and search out and find any other players that are out in the space um, that are going to help us broaden our reach. That's from the vendor and technology side. And I'm sure Yas and uh, Valerie will tell you the same thing. But when you think as, of partnerships from a hotelier, um, you know, th there's many different avenues that that path could go down, which could leave you spinning your wheels when you're trying to attack a show like this. I would think of the number one thing at the property, which is, you know, how are you number one driving top line revenue? So whether that be forming partnerships to help create demand, uh, forming partnerships that help you drive direct bookings, um, or you know, forming partnerships that are um, going to give you exposure, or you know, maybe give you referral business uh, to a tour operator or something on, along those lines. So um, you know, keeping all that stuff in mind, you want to make sure that you are are setting your appointments at the forefront and you're not just running around the show you know with like, like a chicken with your head cut off trying to pull meetings together the day of you know really take some time and invest use the um use the high-tech website i think they have the functionality for for you to reach out they have the contact information for all the for all the partnership opportunities there um and you, and you want to make sure that you, you're setting yourself up to be successful now what I will also say is, you know, I uh, even last year in Toronto at High Tech, I found myself in a situation where my calendar was so filled with meetings consistently every day that I didn't necessarily have enough time to kind of roam the floor, see what's new, kind of catch up on water cooler talk from from some of the partners that we have out there. So it also encouraged folks to make sure you're setting time aside just to have free time so that you have the ability to roam the floor and, and see what's out there. Next slide, please. Now, from a vendor perspective, and, and you know, Valerie touched on this, there's no way you could sit there and, and talk to all 350 vendors unless you were very, very efficient. But I, I don't think um, anybody has the chops to be able to do that at this point. But, you know, look at the prioritization of, of the vendors that you currently have in your technology stack on your property. Um, you know, are, are you looking... Um, at a legacy PMS that you're currently using and potentially you want to take it into the cloud. And obviously you'd want to stop by Yoss's booth and stay in touch. Are you looking at a guest management system right now or a survey or a post-day survey product right now? Um, do you know what else is out there? Are you looking at other options? You know, sometimes I think, you know, hoteliers will become uh, tunnel visioned in regards to the stuff that has been on property for a certain amount of years, or it's just been passed down by the brand. And I know there's some ways that, that you're unable to get out of those. Um, but at some point, you know, it, it you got to keep looking because the, the technology market in hotel and hospitality right now is changing so rapidly. And, and the more rapid we evolve and innovate, the more fragmented the space is going to be. Um, and, 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 players and vendors that are at the show are people that are trying to pull all these pieces together to create seamless workflows and integrated products throughout um, hotels and resorts and casinos, obviously. So from the vendor perspective, I would say, obviously, you want to spend time with your current vendors, engage with them, let them take you out to eat, let them buy you a few drinks. Obviously, that's part of our business and we understand that. But also, don't be afraid to take a look at, at some other vendors that, you know, may be new entrants into the space. You know, take a look and make sure that you're understanding what new products and features and functionalities are coming out from some of uh, the vendors that, that, that are out there as well. Next slide, please. And here's most likely my favorite part. I think both Yas and Valerie will tell you that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely a fun one to, to hang out and a good peer 
I definitely enjoy a, a good, uh, you know, after after hours reception as well as open reception. So, you know, obviously, what better place to surround yourself with a bunch of hoteliers than than Houston at a conference where you know technology is rampant and everybody is speaking to you know potentially some of the challenges that they have you know, just working on sharing ideas and best practices around, you know, what technology stacks are currently working. You know, are people facing integration challenges that may be able to, to give you a heads up to what to look for if you're installing a specific software down the road? Um, you know, I, I, I think sometimes, you know, ho hoteliers may have a tendency to, to hoard secrets and keep them to themselves. I, I think those days are, are changing as there's a ton of opportunity you know, we, we look at the industry, we're on record breaking month after month after month. If you look at STR and, and some of the rev par as well as occupancy metrics. Um, so it's a good time to be in the hotel business. Everybody seems pretty upbeat and positive about where the market um, and the space from a technology perspective is heading. Um, so don't be closed off, you know, try to introduce yourself to as many people as humanly possible. Be open and receptive to conversations. Um, obviously, I'm coming from the vendor side, so you know. Also, don't think every time a vendor approaches you, it's always to try to make a sale. Um, and I know that's my job, and that's my team's job, and as it is for most vendors. Um, but there is also, you know, a, a, an openness and an understanding that we want to understand the challenges, so that we can take that information, take that information back to be able to build better products for the space. Awesome. Thanks, Alice. Um, so. If I'm a hotelier and I'm, I'm going to this show knowing that I want to get away from or move away from some of the current solutions that I have um, mm -hmm. implemented, right? So what are some of the things that I should be thinking about or some of the questions I should be asking new vendors that I, that I visit? I mean, the first thing you have to ask yourself is what, when I wake up in the morning, if something at my property is giving me a headache from a technology perspective, what is it? Is it the service from a current vendor? Is it the lack of integration? Is it, you know, X, Y, Z, insert, you know, problem here, you know, and you, and you want to approach your new potential vendors with those questions and be very upfront and upfront and blunt by expressing some of the challenges that you have so that they could be very direct and transparent with you and letting you know if they have the ability to ease that pain point for you. I think, you know, obviously coming in as transparent as possible is, is the best way to start any new vendor relationship. Awesome. All right. Moving on to you, Yas. Uh, how to absorb and digest the content and what to do with that new information. All right. Thanks, Free. Well, Alice and Valerie already gave you you guys quite a bit, bit of information on uh, on how to attack these three days in Houston uh, this year. Um, I've been going to high tech for the last 15 or so years, first as part of Micros in the last uh, four years as part of Stay in Touch. Um, it's always been a very interesting show to go to. It's also, I think, in addition to being a technology show where you can talk about new trends and learn about new trends, it's also a great show to meet up with peers and friends from the industry because I think we all know that the world is not that big in hospitality. Um, so I, I like I like going there. I also know realize always it's always very busy. I get pulled left and right when I walk around the uh, show floor. So. You know, a few things that we do on our side before we go off to Houston, uh, besides from our marketing team spending a lot of time getting ready for the show, we ask our, you know, I, I enforce or ask my sales team to prepare appointments, make sure there is enough appointments on our booth all day long, which basically means our booth will be busy all day long, all three days, uh, before they actually are allowed to come with me to high tech. So, you know, everybody has to work a little bit to have some fun as well, speaking about what Ellis earlier said, there's you know, also some fun to do at, at high tech. Uh, but I, I think, you know, if you're going as an attendee, preparing yourself is really important if you want to get something out of it. If you really want to go back to your to your hotel or to a group of hotels or to your boss who sent you to check out things, uh, if you prepare, you you set your meetings ahead of time, uh, you can you can really get a lot out of it. So I think it's really important to, to ensure that you set up your meetings. Uh, also, keep your meetings between 10 to 15 minutes. Don't keep them too long. There's a lot of distraction on the floor, a lot of distraction in the booth. Um, you know, if you, if you just get your initial 10 to 15 minutes and you have your core questions ready for the things you want to talk about, 
that should usually be enough to get a good feel. Uh, then you just scan your uh, your batch and, and the vendor will reach out to you pretty much the same day or the next day with some follow up. Or you do that yourself if you really feel strong about the solution that you have talked to. So I think prior to the show, really make sure that you A, know what you want to see. B, if you have figured out what you want to see, uh, check the list of vendors that will be attending and try to set up meetings with them. You know, often they'll give you a free pass also, a nice bonus uh, to, to get actually into the show, saving everybody a bit of money. Uh, but it, it just allows you to really have the time and see what you want to establish and, and reach. Next slide. So while you're at the show, while you're at the show, I think, uh, you know, focus is obviously a very important thing. Uh, just like me, you probably, if you go for a number of years in a row, you'll be pulled left and right. You will, you'll see French, you see old college, everything is be walking around there. Uh, you want to know what's going on at any given time. So, you know, look at hashtag uh, high tech all the time on Twitter. That's basically used by the high tech organization show to send out the latest and greatest stuff. Uh, while you're roaming around, I know from my own experience, it's very tiring to stand up all day in the booth. So for you guys as roaming around as attendees, that's also uh, pretty uh, tiring. You know, take a break from time to time, go to H go to the HFTP lounge, uh, take to the catering, sit down, relax, drink some water, stay hydrated, very important, all these kind of stuff uh, to get the most out of it. At the end of each day, really summarize your experiences for yourself. Because I think if you don't do that, if you just go and then you fly back home Thursday or Friday, uh, you kind of, by the time it's Monday, you've kind of forgotten what you learned the previous week. So you should really take the time before you start partying in the evening and go and visit Alice and Valerie's shows, I mean, parties and our party. Make sure you are kind of, just go back to your hotel room for like 30 minutes, sit down, write the things you learned today, send out some emails to vendors you really like. These vendors will definitely appreciate it. Uh, and, you know, just get yourself in a good spit, uh, spirit for the, for the next day as well. And when you then come back, uh, the following Monday to your offers, you know what to go after and how to follow up from high tech. Uh, you can then also share that with your you know, with your staff at home. If you're if you're running an IT team and you've seen something very cool on Wednesday, it'd probably be good for the rest of your team at home to get some information about that. So send them a note with a link of that vendor about it. Um, if you want to continue to engage with the vendor, we also sure to set up follow-up meetings at the booth. Don't don't just go there for 15 minutes and move on. If you really like the PMS the revenue management system or the uh, reputation management system that you saw from, for example, from the three of us, you know, set up the next meeting to get things going. I think that really will help you make it worthwhile going. And I think, I think my biggest tip for, for today really is consider Thursday to visit the floor. And why am I saying that? Uh, Thursday is usually the vendor day. There is hardly any attendee left on Thursday to um, look at you know, uh, go go visit Boots and go miss it, uh, visit and see products. So there's a lot of time for, for every every vendor will have a lot of time for you because every vendor will take the customer, the attendee above the existing vendor on site. So Thursday is the best day, in my opinion, to be at the show if you actually want to get time from your vendors and want to learn a lot of good stuff. Next slide. Um, so after the show, I think as I mentioned earlier, while you're at the show, you know, have some fun, but also be serious, take notes. After the show, take your notes back home on the way on the flight back or the first day in the back in the office, review your notes. You know, if the information that you like and if you have some uh, information established and you have contact with some of these vendors that you're interested in going further with, reach out to them proactively. Uh, get things going and, and really try to understand and learn from the things you've done. You know, strategize also a little bit, okay, what have I seen? What do I like? What do I do not like? Put it in a little spreadsheet and take it from there. And also share that, I think, most importantly, with the rest of your staff. You know, if I look at my own organization as a vendor, I mean, I do send sometimes staff to certain you know, events, certain conferences. And I think it's useful for when we send one person there, that's kind of nice to go to usually because usually a conference has, as we all know, some fun around it as well. It's also, so it's kind of, it's a nice extra perk to go to in many cases. When you come back, share some of the good things you saw with your peers or with your staff right away. I think they will very much appreciate that. Um, lots of vendors do lots of post uh, blog posts, uh, post blog posts on the show, sorry about that. Uh, 
Um, so there is definitely some more information to pick up from from those vendors that in the blog post that they do after the show that I think is very worthwhile taking note of and do stuff with. Next slide. Awesome. Um, all right. So again, from a hotelier's perspective, you know, if I if I went to this show knowing that I wanted to, you know, visit a certain amount of or certain different types of solutions, right? Vendors for different types of solutions. Would it be helpful if I put together a maybe a short comparative chart? Maybe laying out some of yeah, the vendors think, and, and yeah. kind of scoring them on all of the important elements um, that yeah. we care about. Yeah. So I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I use the Thursday because there's very few attendees, as I just mentioned. I use it myself to roam around the floor, but I'm not just going to roam around. I, I've predefined already the vendors I want to talk to or I want to see. If I want to talk to vendors, usually to establish or continue the relation we already have, or if I want to see, it's probably because it's a new, uh, new vendor that's there and that has some stuff to show that I haven't seen. I plan that out, put it in a little spreadsheet, and kind of you know, roam around on you know certain time and try to get through that in an hour or two or so, and then I go back to the business I have to do it. I think from out to a at any point of view, if you let, let's just for a moment think that you're looking for a new PMS and you're looking for a new RMS system and a new reputation management system, you have three threats that you could go to. You should probably think to yourself, okay, in the morning, I'm going to check out the PMS systems, compare them. In the afternoon, I'm going to check out the RMS. And on Thursday, I'm going to do the reputation management systems. And based on that, I'll have a good set of data I can then act on following the show. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Uh, so the last discussion point, some of the can't miss experiences at high tech this year, which of course is in Houston. Yeah, do you want to kick this one off? Yeah, um, so I, I think over the last couple of years, definitely mobile was uh, always high on top of everybody's list to look at. I, I think that's going to continue the same this year. I think in addition to mobile, uh, the, the buzzword, I guess, the last couple of months is APIs. Everything needs to have APIs today. Uh, so if, you, if you're exploring new opportunities that are around mobile and, a, and APIs, those are really things you should dive deep into and look at a few more vendors than just the ones that you normally would go to uh, to find out. So definitely mobile and API is probably the main things if you if you want to look for something new and innovative uh, to find. In addition, of course, to our, you know, a SaaS based mobile cloud PMS that's still, you know, fairly new. It's only in the last few years that the cloud PMS came about and got, became successful. So definitely lots of opportunities to review as well there, including ours. Um, Last but not least from my point of view, I'm holding a short presentation on Wednesday, June the 20th in 8.30 in the morning. And I'll be talking about um, how guests have changed and how as a result of that the PMS should be changing. I think I'll, I'll be talking about some very good topics that many of you might, be, might find very interesting to uh, listen and to learn from. So I'm hoping that you also be able to uh, see those, come and see me in person and listen to uh, what I have to say. And I'll probably be joined with one of our customers on how they adapt our mobile PMS in their hotel operations. Awesome. And we will send out a sign up sheet in the follow up email. Uh, Ellis. Yeah. And uh, Yas, I'll definitely be there. You know that I'm always supportive of our partners uh, with uh, stay in touch. And I was I was also a small world. Well, not a small world because we have an office in Vegas, but experienced uh, one of your products checking out of a pretty big hotel out in Vegas just the other week. So good, good to see all that stuff happening out there. Um, look, you, you know, a, a, as an attendee to high tech, you are probably going to have a very intense schedule of things that you need to get done. Um, but Houston, as you know, has has come out of some uh, interesting times in regards to hurricanes and, and and some other things, and the city is obviously thriving. Um, you know, on what is it, June twentieth from seven to nine. I'm throwing in a shameless plug here. Um, Trust or uh, Rainmaker is hosting a uh, after hours reception from seven to nine at the Grotto, which is basically attached right there to the convention center. So you don't need to go too far away and we don't overlap with uh, with any other big parties. So we, we hope to see uh, everyone there. I think everyone on this call uh, is, is obviously going to be there. Um, and then around Houston, there's a few things that are that are pretty close. I mean, 
for, for me, I'm, I'm a big baseball fan. So I know the Houston Astros are playing. I know we're thinking about taking some clients out to a game. So that's uh, that's one thing that I would definitely go see. They're still touting the banner of, of winning the World Series just last year. Um, and then also right down there in the city, which is pretty interesting to have in a city center, is the aquarium. Um, so we actually looked at hosting an event at the aquarium, um, but then decided to move it back to the convention center. But that place is, uh, is pretty cool to see right down in the, in the middle of the city. So, um, if you got a chance to, to go check some, some things out, I'd say number one, our reception after on June 20th, um, and then try to check out a baseball game. If you can get some uh, vendors to take you out, I would definitely recommend that. All right. Thanks so much, Ellis. I actually was going to recommend the same thing. I love baseball. I'm an avid fan and I like to go to different stadiums. So if there's anyone on the call today that would like to go hit up Ellis and I and we'll take you to the ball game. <laughs> um, but beforehand, if you if you want to have a little pregame, um, I, I like to recommend having some fun on the trade show floor as well. There's 350 exhibitors. We've talked about that a lot already. They're all trying to stand out to you. Um, we are actually trust you uh, a munich based company um so we're out of germany um and and so we enjoy a good beer and pretzel at the end of the day so we will be serving those from our booth um on tuesday and wednesday night so definitely come see us and have a little break um uh in the trade show experience before moving on to other vendors we would love to have you join us um we also have some great giveaways for you so Lots to see, again, also on the trade show floor um, before you're going out and exploring Houston. So we definitely hope to see you there. Awesome. All right. Thank you again to our presenters. I'm going to turn it over to the audience. We do have a couple of questions here. Uh, first one, I'm going to address this to you, Valerie. It seems like a, it's a marketing question. Um, is it beneficial to provide an email sign-up sheet or is it best to exchange business cards? Ah, uh, business cards. Yes, <laughs> definitely something um, that I know is is difficult to, I mean, you're just going to easily lose a business card a lot of the times, right? So that's always a concern of mine. So when I'm talking to my salespeople before they're going to the show, I always recommend that they do a, a little bit of everything. Um, a sign-up sheet is great, but um, what we've actually put together is um, just a, a small one-pager, kind of a card with information um, about the person that you're meeting with. Um, because, you know, when you're looking at a business card, it might not tell you what the conversation um, that you had with the with the hotelier or partner or whoever you're speaking with. So we actually have a small little card that we have for, for um, and, and it's actually all within one booklet, so it doesn't get lost. It just has a little bit more information. So while you're having the meetings, even if they're just quick, jot down some information, you know, find out what PMS they're using, um, find out what, um, if you're talking to a, a, a hotelier or if you're a hotelier and you're talking to a vendor, you know, find out um, some of your high level questions, write them down, um, keep them all in one book so that they stay safe and, and you probably won't lose it. And, um, and that's been a, a good way for us to kind of remember all of the, the multitude of conversations that we have. Awesome. And just to piggyback off of that, I think another good uh, idea would be to, and if you got people back um, in your office who are, who are staying up to date and, and, you know, responsible for following up as soon as possible, it could be beneficial to create a shared Google document in which you could have one laptop posted with that document open, um, a live feed in which you can jot down notes in there, jot down the um, the contact information and, and uh, make sure that your SDRs, wherever it is, um, you know, posted in at your property, or not your property, but um, in your office can follow up as soon as possible. All right, so with that said, I just wanna give you guys an opportunity to give your uh, last thoughts, um, last pitch. Um, any advice you have for the audience? I'm just gonna remember, uh, remind everybody of my Thursday thoughts. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Thursday is a very quiet day for everybody at high tech. So it, it's a great opportunity for uh, attendees to get more time from their vendor. And it's a great opportunity for vendors to have more time for the attendees. So that's what I'm gonna leave it at. One more thing, uh, if you are a hotelier and you're interested in seeing a mobile PMS live in action, uh, the Hotel Alessandra, which is a Valencia hotel right next to the conference center is using our mobile PMS with all its self-service components. And we'll be more than happy to show you how that works 
uh, and potentially hook you up with somebody at the hotel to uh, talk to that. Any last thoughts, Valerie? Um, you know, I would just re-emphasize, I think, preparing beforehand. Um, I know that that can be difficult, you know, usually when you're wrapping up to go out of the office for potentially four plus days, um, you know, there's a lot of work to wrap up before you do that. But, you know, it doesn't take much time. Set aside an hour, you know, before you go and just make sure that you know who you want to meet with, because really once you're there, it can be quite overwhelming with all of the attendees and, and places that you can go and directions that you can face. So I just can't emphasize enough how preparing beforehand, I think, will help you make the most out of the show. Awesome. And Alice? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, pertaining to this group on the phone here, um, you know, Stay in touch and Rainmaker have um, a, a great interface uh, between, uh, you know, business intelligence product um, as well as our uh, revenue management pricing optimization solution. Um, you know, with with Trust You, we pipe in some of their data uh, into some of our uh, kind of shared clients' existing ecosystems. Um, you know, to me, when I think about just the three of us on this call and how we as partners are trying to create a more seamless technology stack for hotels. You know, I, I always get very interested in talking about, you know, what else should vendors or what else should technology providers be doing to help hoteliers in their day to day? Um, you know, so come with those questions, be transparent um, and, and let us, you know, as a industry, let us try to help figure out you know, at the end of this, what's going to make everyone, uh, you know, positioned in a better place. Awesome. All right. I just want to thank again our audience for sticking with us. Um, I want to thank our presenters for uh, all of your great insight. And to the audience, we hope to see you uh, pass by our booths uh, at iTech. And we hope that you, you, you know, find it fruitful and that you are able to do the necessary preparation beforehand. Uh, you have a good time at the show and you have a good follow up. Thank you guys again. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.